Hello YouTube, this is Brian Tubbs coming at you with another video. Uh, today I'm, uh, I'm just finishing up a piece. Um, it's a trefoil piece. I think I showed it to you guys uh, in the last video. Um, it wasn't anywhere near complete. I was just kind of working on it. And I don't, don't even remember if I was even sure what base I was going to use for it. So I'm working on uh, another piece, but I pretty much finished up this piece. I still have to um, put a, um, like, a, you know, the copper rust coating on here. <clears throat> I was debating about using a, um, the Japanese brown from Sculpt Nouveau and then clear coating it. But I think I'll go ahead and use my, my usual hydrogen peroxide white vinegar and table salt to get the you know the the copper to come out of the of this portion down here now this top portion as i had mentioned before is aluminum i have not worked with an aluminum sculpture before i've worked with aluminum when i was taking um my welding course and i don't know if i mentioned it before but the welding course that i took was um we welded from eighth inch aluminum, mild steel, stainless steel, all the way up, all the way up to two inch, two inch thick armor plating. So we did all of that. It was accelerated, of course. It wasn't a, you know, a full two year, 24, whatever semesters, whatever, whatever it is. This was an accelerated course. <coughs> so we welded aluminum, we welded uh, stainless steel, mild steel. We welded a lot of different material. <clears throat> we had all of the access to everything because it was a small class. It was probably about 10 to 12 guys and girls in that class. It was very, um, it was a, just a close knit group of people and we had access to everything, all the welders, everything. So I, I learned to work on aluminum at that point in time and I welded some periodically between that time and now, but this is my first time actually just doing a aluminum project other than welding up coupons and welding up little small, smaller stuff. <clears throat> but this is going to lead to more aluminum sculptures. Um, I'm not sure if I would be using all aluminum, if I would be using aluminum and stainless steel, aluminum and core tan, aluminum mild steel, probably just a combination of everything. Because when we're doing shows, it seems like regardless of what we make, there's always either mild steel or core tan, and there's always stainless steel on top. And people will always think that the stainless steel is aluminum. So I said, okay, since they think it's aluminum, I'll go ahead and make an aluminum piece. <clears throat> so this again is a tray foil. Uh, the tubes are inch and a half uh, thick tubes. <clears throat> this base stands, uh, I think it's 48 inches tall. Um, and what I did was as opposed to just having a static piece where people come up and touch it, because if I had I made it, made it static, they would all be saying, it looked like it should spin. So what did I do? I made it so it would, it would spin. <laughs> Just walk up to it and they will spin it. <clears throat> There's bearings underneath here. They are um, a roller bearing. Underneath here there's a neck that goes from this up to the base of this. And the roller bearings sit there. And then down inside there was caught um, a pillow pillow bearing, a pillow case bearing, something, something to that effect. I have a picture here I'll show you guys. So down here, about 16 inches from the, from the ground into here, there's a bracket in there, and there's a, a, a pillow bearing on top of the bracket, and there's a pillow bearing on the bottom of the bracket. Because had I just put a pillow bearing on the, the top portion of the bracket, you would have had a lot of play in this piece. Even though it's, the neck is fairly tight, I couldn't have it completely tight because there'll be a lot of resistance on the rod. There's a rod that goes from here all the way down and to the, to the base that goes into those um, 
inch and a quarter pillow bearings down there. Um, so I'll just kind of show you guys a picture of the bearing. See if you guys can see it. Kind of hard to see. But you can see the bearing is right there in the center. And then that's a rod going through that bottom bearing. Then there's another bearing identical to that one on top of that one. And that's what um, gives all of its spin action. Now, this is um, the wind is not going to be able to spin this unless it's a pretty strong wind because there's just not much surface area here. Um, but I made it where people come up to it and at the shows, they can walk around and spin it. And oftentimes when you have something that spins or moves, people will buy it. They just want to buy it just so they can say they bought something that spins or moves. So I went ahead and, like I said, added the spin effect to it. It just wouldn't look right. I guess it would look right, but it just wouldn't be right if it didn't spin. Because if a person, if it's at their, their property and they're looking at it from this angle, they might get tired of it. So all I have to do is take it and spin it to a different angle. Get tired of looking at that, they spin it to a different angle. I'd rather spin like that than them having to take the, the whole base and move this thing. This thing weighs about 110, 115 pounds. And I don't want them to have to be taking the stakes out of the ground trying to turn this thing. So it's just better to just do it like I, like I did it. So this is a tray foil, but I'm not sure what we're gonna call it overall. Um, but I will be making some more. I might use thicker tubing next time. It could be stainless steel tubing, it could be aluminum. I'm not exactly sure yet, but I will be making another one. I made a small one for a tabletop. It was um, made out of carbon steel and we had to paint it and all that kind of stuff. And painting it was just, just a headache, trying to get in all the crevices and all this stuff. Every time you come into one side with a can, you would touch this, this, uh, this, this, um, this arm and then you have to paint over it again and it was just a mess. And then the paint wants to run because it's just so difficult to get in there to do it. Um, so from here on out, when I do these, I'll either use core 10, stainless steel, or aluminum. And if I use the core 10, I'll just let the copper patina come out and it'll all be uh, just one, one color. The base will be copper, the upper portion will have the copper patina. So that's, uh, that's what I've been doing the last few days anyway, working on this thing. And I showed you guys in the last video, um, I think I showed you Guardian, which will be placed at um, one of the Tesla facilities. Um, as soon as they get all the, the facility completed and pass all their inspections with the city and all that kind of stuff. Um, and so I showed you guys also in the last video these two big loops that I was making. One was a loop that went like this, one had a loop in it and went kind of wrapped around itself. Those are sitting outside letting, it, letting them weather. But in the center when I cut the loops out, there was these shapes. They had a point on the bottom that came up and it rolled down right in the center of the loops. So I'm gonna show you guys what I'm what I came up with, my wife and I, we came up with this, this piece based on drops from that piece. Like I've told you guys in earlier videos, whenever you cut out one shape of, uh, in metal to make a sculpture, always look at what's left over because you can come with some cool designs that you could not have thought of yourself. They just, they just happen. So I'm gonna uh, kind of scan the camera down and let you guys kind of see what we're doing what we're doing now. Okay, so this is a, these are the, the center pieces from those big loops that I cut out. There was a, a front and a back because on each piece there was a front and back. So this uh, went from two pieces, 2D, to three pieces. Um, they're com complete. 
So this is the uh, design. I have two of them. Um, they're slightly different, but almost the same. Close enough to being the same. And let me show you guys the the rest of the piece, the, the bottom portion anyway. It's like an S pattern. And it's gonna sit on a base down here. I'm gonna have a base probably about that tall, um, or maybe a little bit taller than that. It'll be a flat base, but it'll be built up, so I won't have any angles or anything like that to it. It's gonna sit on it like that. And as opposed to having it just sit on this point, I will have a, a slight gusset coming off of here to support that. But it'll be cool to be a part of the art. It won't just be something stuck on there. So that's what uh, I'm working on now. I have uh, the other side of this up on a table. So I'm going to be uh, shaping the, the outside metal in the English wheel, just get all the curves and whatnot. Then I'm going to start building it up. Um, and I'm going to show you guys one of the, uh, we, we call them leaves. I'll show you one of the, the, one of the leaves uh, kind of up close just so you can see what I'm talking about. And this is what they, they look like. So they're 3D. And you see these, uh, the patterns in them. This is our uh, core 10. But these, this pattern, these, these, these uh, veins are gonna be stainless steel rod. We're gonna have a 3 8 rod coming up the middle. And then quarter inch rod coming off. Like we do, we have a, the piece we call, um, leaf leaf is about six feet tall i think i sh showed it i'm sure i've showed it in another video we had one i would have been able to show it to you but we uh sold it um last week to a uh, guy that um has a law firm he liked the piece so well that he just purchased it the piece wasn't completely ready, but he loved it so much, he and his wife, that they bought it from us. It hadn't patinaed completely. It was just beyond this stage. Normally when we sell them, they're fully patinaed. You know, they have the, the brown, the copper look to them, but that one looked just a little bit darker than this. But they wanted it, so they, they bought it. So now after I make this one, I'm going to be making the one we call leaf. I know you guys have seen it. It's the one that's set up on the pedestal, kind of like, like that. It's um, core 10, then it has the stainless steel vines coming down. So I gotta make another one of those. We just, I just made that one a couple weeks ago. Hadn't showed anyone. My wife showed the guy a picture of it. I told him to go to our website. He saw that one and he wanted it. And like I said, we hadn't even had a chance to do its weathering thing, but they wanted it, so we, we sold it to them. All right, guys, that's kind of where I'm at now. So what I'll do is once I get uh, some of this watered up, I'll shoot another video just to kind of show you guys where I'm at and maybe even uh, have the opportunity to let you guys see me do some, some welding. Well, that's gonna do it for today, guys. I appreciate you tuning in, and I'd appreciate it if you like and subscribe the video just so I can continue growing the channel, so I can get more of this stuff out to you guys, stuff I call secrets of the art world out to you guys at no charge to you. All right, guys, I'll uh, see you on the next one, and as usual, peace out.